come to you in the name of Jesus. Lord, I ask that you open our spiritual ears, open our hearts, so that we can hear this word tonight, Lord, and we can mark it to it. Hallelujah. God, this is a hard word. So help us, Lord, to receive it. In Jesus' name. I ask you to let the pastors bring it. I've tried every way in the world to get out of it. And he said I give it to you, and there's a reason why he gave it to you, because I spent six hours last night repenting and rebuking the enemy out of me. Because I was guilty of this very thing. In more ways than one. But tonight, we're going to talk about offense. And he had me title this message, The Spirit of Offense. God's army has no room for spoiled brats. I love y'all. Does it fit me? Before we give it to you, God gives it to us, and we have to mark it to it. And I did a lot of marking last night. And I ask every one of you to forgive me for letting the spirit of offense use me. And I love you. of the spirit of offense. You're walking down the street and you see a woman and she's dressed in a tube top and hoochie mama shorts. And the first thing that some Christians will do is grab their chest like they're having a heart attack and say, well, that's just nasty. She needs to put on some clothes. And that woman, nine times out of ten, is a sinner. And she's just doing what her flesh told her to do. You know, she, she's being led by her flesh because she's a sinner. But yet some Christians get offended. I've been guilty. Second example. You give somebody a nice gift. You either worked hours on it or you spent hours picking it out in the store. You hand it to them and they don't even say thank you. And something rises up and you get all puffed up. Well, I spent hours working on that. She didn't even bother to say thank you. That is the spirit of offense. Let's go to Philippians chapter 1, verses 9 through 11. I made you a pretty presentation to make it nice. Because you give it to me 15 minutes before service. Okay. When you got it, go ahead and stand. Philippians chapter 1, verses 9 through 11. And this I pray that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment. And that word judgment there means discernment. Verse 10, that may, ye may approve things that are excellent, that ye may be sincere and without offense 
till the day of Christ. Being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Christ Jesus, unto the glory and praise of God. What are the fruits of righteousness? Galatians 5, 22 and 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Did you hear anywhere in there? It's okay to be offended. It does not matter what, whether you think that you have the right to be offended or if other people look at you and say, you have the right to be offended. You do not. You do not. Offense never produces good fruit. It is not of God, no matter how justified you think you are. Offense never produces good fruit. Where we're getting ready to go, tight shorts, hoochie mama shorts, tattoos all over, it's going to be an everyday occurrence. And if we can't be the hands and feet of Jesus, if we can't show them his heart, how are we ever going to, going to teach deliverance to them? How are we ever going to deliver them? Go back to the woman with the hoochie mama shorts. Now, when we see her, we get offended. But what does she see in us? Does she see the light of Christ? She sees that nasty, disdainful, disapproving look on your face. And she says, I want no part of that. And you just lost your ability to witness to her. When Jesus sat at the well, and the woman came to draw the water, he knew exactly who she was. He knew exactly what she was. But he asked her for a drink anyway. Yeah. And she, knowing exactly who she was and what she was, looked at him and said, and I'm paraphrasing, I, I'm a Samaritan, you're a Jew. Why are you talking to me? I'm beneath you. And he said to her, if you knew who it was that was asking you for a drink of water, you'd be asking me. And even though he told her of her sin, he did it with love. And he didn't create an enemy, he created a witness. Because she ran and told everybody she knew about him. And how much he loved her and what he did for her. Okay. Let's move on. So how do we recognize the spirit of offense? Strong's Concordance definition of offense. And this is not offense, you all. Offense is taking your sword, which is the word of God, and fighting the enemy with it. That's offense. Going after something is offense. This is offense. The occasion to fall or stumble and walk. How do we recognize it? Number one. Characteristics of offense. Pride and entitlement. I put these two together because you really can't have one without the other. If you've got pride, you're going to think you're entitled to something. And if you think you're entitled to something, you're going to be prideful. So, they're together. Go to Proverbs 16, 18, 18 through 20. Proverbs 16, 18 through 20. Or you can write it down and look it up later because it's up here. Pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Better it is to be of a humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. He that handleth a matter wisely shall find good. 
and whoso trusteth in the Lord, happy is he. He that handleth a matter wisely. He that handleth a matter with discernment. And with a humble heart. And it is impossible to have a humble spirit before God when you feel like the world owes you. When you feel like you're owed something. When you feel like you're entitled to something. In fact, it's exactly the opposite. Because when you become a soldier in the army of God, you are now his servant. Your mission is to show the fruit of the Spirit and the light of Jesus. And how do you do that? By giving yourself, by serving, and by changing the trash in the church. By doing something you would otherwise feel it is beneath you if you were full of pride and entitlement. Colossians chapter 3, verses 23 through 34. And whatsoever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. Rob just told me that first to give it up. Knowing that of the Lord you shall receive the reward of, inher of the inheritance, for you serve the Lord Christ. If you allow offense to rise up in you, if you allow it to get in your heart, then comes pride and entitlement, and next comes bitterness. And it's a rabbit hole, y'all. Here's the rabbit hole. Number two, bitterness. Number three, resentment. Number four, unforgiveness. And number five, hatred. The spirit of, uh, go ahead and write it down. I'll go ahead and talk. The spirit of offense invites these four demonic forces into your life. And if you become full of bitterness and resentment at those you feel owe you, then you'll eventually have hatred for those same people if you don't repent and get it out of you. How many brothers and sisters look around? How many have we lost because they've allowed the spirit of offense to take over them and pull them out of here? And they're somewhere they don't belong. I was walking around in that and a lot more. But I had enough of the Spirit of God in me to know that I needed help. And my pastors had enough spirit in them and discernment in them to know that I needed deliverance. And I'm still going through deliverance, y'all. It's taking time. It's taking time. Every night, every night there's something that God shows me that needs to come out. There's something that God shows me that I need to train my mind against. And this is something that you have to train your mind against. You have to train your mind against offense. You have to constantly guard it. Because all it takes is one word from somebody to cause you to puff up. Amen. And you have to close your ears to the enemy's lies. You don't have the right to be offended. You don't have the right. You are a child of God. You lost that right when you became a child of God. If you don't open your heart to the Spirit of God and let the Spirit of God talk to you, He's not going to tell you nothing. He's not going to tell you nothing. For years, I walked around in this and I didn't know I had it. I thought... I was doing right. I thought I was fine. I was wrong. I was wrong. If you don't want to hear it, you're not going to. Plain and simple. He's not going to speak to somebody that doesn't want him. But if you don't get anything else out of this message tonight, please understand this. If you don't open your heart, and let him speak to you and tell you, this is wrong. This is what you're doing wrong. This is what I want to do for you. You're going to walk around in that same old mess for the rest of your life. Now, let's move on to number six. If I can get it to change. Spirit of worthlessness. Believe it or not. When you walk around 
in pride and entitlement, and you walk around in bitterness, and you walk around in resentment, unforgiveness, hatred, that's going to lead to the spirit of worthlessness. Because everybody you see, you're going to think, well, they don't want nothing to do with me. I try to talk to them and they ignore me. They're looking at me wrong. They're speaking to me wrong. Well, I guess I'm just not good enough to be around anybody. I guess I'm just not worth anything. And then the spirit of worthlessness comes on you. Y'all think I'm kidding? I lived it. I lived it. Then the last one that comes after the spirit of worthlessness gets a hold of you. A dead spirit. Because you refuse to listen to God and let him speak to you and tell you that everything, everything that you need to do to free yourself, to let him deliver you. Then he leaves. And you're left with a dried up dead spirit. You're walking around you're doing your job, you know, you're coming to church, you're doing what you're supposed to do, but you're dead inside. No relationship with Jesus at all because you don't want to pray. Because every time you do, you feel like a dead brick wall. Why are you even living? Why are you even living? Just go ahead, slit your wrist, get it over with. Because you're not worthy to be here. Nobody wants you here. Nobody loves you. So just go ahead and off yourself. But for the grace of God. But for the grace of God. Now, those are the. Does anybody need me to repeat the, the characteristics of events? Or did everybody get them? I think you need to write these down. If you're not. The, the pride and the entitlement. What the, I got the PC 1920. I don't know which chapter you said. Which book I said? Yeah, which book? Yeah. Uh, Proverbs 16, wow. 18 through 20. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Colossians 3, 22 and 23, I think. 23 and 24. 23 and 24. Oh, sorry. Now, now that we, can, we know all that garbage, this is your verse for dead spirit. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus, or Jesus Christ our Lord. Romans 6 and 23. Now, how do we break free? Everybody read that? Stop being a spoiled brat. The world owes you nothing. Jesus owes you nothing, but you owe him everything. 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 <laughs> Retrain your mind. Stop thinking you're entitled to that. When God wants to give it to you, he'll give it to you. If not, go on about your business. Go on working for him. Go on marching for him. Go on in the army of God. But stop thinking that you deserve it. Retrain your mind. Put on the mind of Christ. Put on the robes of righteousness. His righteousness, not ours. Amen. See, when, when I was in the floor for I don't know how to many hours puking my guts up, trying to get rid of that thing that was in me, afterward, God spoke to me and he said, I want you to paint the walls of that room that he was in. So when I dipped down the brush in the bucket, it come out red. Because see, last night, after I had repented of all this, 
it came to my spirit again and I started painting the walls. And when I started painting the walls, that red brush turned white. And the walls turned pure white. And he said, it's not your righteousness, Bobby, it's mine. It's my righteousness that you're painting this room with. Number two, forgive. Forgive, 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 forgive. If you have to do it 500 times a day. Forgive, 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 forgive. Forgive the person that you think wronged you. Because it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter to a hill of beans what that person did to you. I'm sorry. Matthew 6 and 15. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your father forgive you yours. I got that real deal. Number three, repent. You can't repent until you forgive. Why? Just read it. If you can't forgive, neither can your father forgive you. There's no point in trying to repent because he can't forgive you. Number four. Ask God to deliver you. And you don't need us or one of the pastors to pray for you. Sometimes you do. But when it comes to stuff that you're, you know is in there and God's saying, get it out, and there's nobody around you, guess what? I spent the night puking. I spent the night asking for forgiveness. I spent the night forgiving. I spent the night doing all of this stuff. Number five, what I just told you about. Paint the walls of that room with the blood of Jesus Christ. Because once you paint the walls with his blood, the devil can't cross the bloodline. Paint your doorpost with the blood of Jesus Christ. And then ask God to fill that room with good fruit and with the fruit of the Spirit and with the Holy Spirit and then close that entranceway. And don't open it back up to the enemy. Anybody got any questions? Anybody been guilty of this? Don't raise your hand. I don't want to know. Come to the altar. I forgive that person, but 